There's a fish. Whoa, man, these fish are so hot. You know, there are lots of ways to catch fish on nymphs and wet flies. People have been swinging wet flies for hundreds of years. But one of the most effective ways of catching fish on subsurface flies is nymph fishing with an indicator or a dry dropper. And we're gonna show you lots of different ways and some advanced tactics for catching fish on nymphs and dry droppers. Oh yeah, nice fish! That fish has already refused that fly, and you're gonna have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The ultimate guide to fly fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing, Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Main Office of Tourism, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. Remember sitting on a dock fishing a worm? You may still do it now either for your own fun on a lazy afternoon or with your kids. Fly fishing with some kind of indicator is just slightly more sophisticated than bobber fishing. But your indicator, much more than being just a signal of a strike, is a drift indicator. Most of the insects and crustaceans trout eat are weak swimmers and they don't swim against the current or swim across current lanes. They drift with the current at the same speed as bubbles and debris. It's our job to make sure our nymphs drift in the same way. Getting the right depth is also important. Most times, trout stay close to the bottom of a river where the current is slower and it's easier for them to hold their position. During aquatic insect hatches though, when there are insects throughout the water column, trout may range from their spot on the bottom to grab something in midwater. There are all kinds of different indicators that you can buy in a tackle shop, and they all have their purposes. First and foremost is the extremely popular and infamous thingamabobber. And it's soft plastic, filled with air, so it floats really, really well. Similar to the thingamabobber is one called an airlock, and it's a little bit harder plastic, still filled with air. And then there's yarn indicators, one of my favorites. Uh, the nice thing about yarn indicator is you make them yourself. So you can make a yarn indicator as small or as large as you want. Another advantage is it's biodegradable, it's sheep's wool. So that if you lose this on the stream, no big deal. It's biodegradable just like any animal fur. So for slow water like this, flatter water, I really like a yarn indicator, if I'm gonna use an indicator at all. Um, the yarn, is much easier to cast. It's less air resistant. It lands a lot lighter on the water. And also, yarn indicators are so much more sensitive than the hard plastic ones. One of the most effective and subtle ways you can fish with a nymph is to use a dry fly for your indicator. We call it a dry dropper. And you just tie on a big, fairly visible, high floating dry fly. You tie a piece of tippet on the bend of that hook and you put a nymph underneath it. Now you have to be careful, you can't use a super heavy nymph because it'll drown the dry fly. Oh! I was hung up. And the fish ate it while, while I was hung up. That was weird. I was hung up on a branch and I tried to tug it loose and I got it loose and there was a fish on the end that ate the nymph.
fat, fat fish. Wow, that fish has got some girth on him. Of course, the added bonus is that you might also catch a fish on a dry, and you get to use two different kinds of flies at once. Best dry flies to use on this are highly visible foam body dries. One of my favorites is the Chubby Chernobyl. It combines a foam body with a highly visible yarn wing, which shows up well on the water and sheds water with a single false cast. But any heavily hackled or foam body dry fly with a hair or yarn wing, like a stimulator or a hopper pattern will work. Parachutes are also good in larger sizes. You can even use smaller dries, but you'll need to combine these with lightly weighted or unweighted nymphs like the pheasant tail. On the big nymph again. Yeah, you always want to try to use as small an indicator as you can get away with. This big indicator I have here is just way too heavy for this water. So go with an indicator that's, that's big enough to float the flies, but not so big that it's going to make a big splat on the water. The size of the indicator is based on two things. The weight of the flies and or weights on the leader you're using, and also how visible it is. Smaller indicators are sometimes hard to see in heavy water. And if your flies and weight are too heavy, a small one can get pulled under quickly. If you can't see your indicator, or if it sinks right away, switch to a bigger one. The color of your indicator is a personal decision based on how well you see and water conditions. In heavy water, you might choose the one you think is most visible. But in heavily fished areas, sometimes fish are frightened or suspicious of brightly colored indicators. So a clear or white one to match the natural bubbles in a river might be a smart move. The placement of an indicator on your leader is critical. A good rule of thumb, especially in faster water, is to set your indicator about one and a half to two times the water depth above your first fly or weight. The faster the water, the more you want to favor a longer depth. And conversely, in really slow water, you might need to set your indicator at just about the water depth, especially with heavier flies. Once you set your indicator initially, it's likely you'll have to move it. You can gauge this by looking at a number of things. First, you should be occasionally snagging bottom. Or you should see the indicator ticking along the bottom it looks like the indicator is stuttering a bit. If this is not happening every half dozen drifts, you know you're not getting deep enough and need to move your indicator up the leader three to six inches closer to the rod tip. You should be getting snagged. And if you're not losing flies, you're probably not fishing deep enough. On the other hand, if you're getting hung up too frequently, every two or three casts, it's time to raise the indicator a few inches to move your flies a bit off the bottom. Besides your indicator height, you should also adjust the weight of your flies. Most anglers and guides agree that if you can get the right weight by using weighted flies, you're better off because putting weight on the leader makes casting tougher and tangles nastier. Of course, to further fine tune your weight, you can add weight on the leader to add sink rate to your flies. We'll deal with added weight on the leader shortly. Most people fish two nymphs at a time where it is legal to use two flies. Typically, when tying two flies in line, the larger, heavier nymph is tied to the tippet, and then the smaller nymph is tied to the bend of the larger fly with a piece of tippet that is about the same size as the tippet, or one size finer. The upper fly, tied onto your tippet, is usually the biggest and heaviest you think you can get away with, and is often considered merely an anchor to get the smaller fly down. You can make the dropper length anywhere from four inches to 20 inches. And there's really no rule of thumb on exactly how long to make it. Another way that is less likely to tangle is to tie the second fly to the eye of the first. So you have two knots in one eye. 
This typically lessens the chances of foul hook fish and is also the best solution if your upper fly is barbless. You can also add a dropper above your heavier fly by leaving one tag end of your surgeon's knot or blood knot long, then using that as a dropper. Or you can tie a tippet ring to the end of your leader and then tie two pieces of tippet to the ring. Usually, when fishing two flies on separate pieces of material, the bigger fly is tied to the end of the tippet and the smaller fly to the dropper. The best and cleanest way to fish below an indicator is to use one or two flies with enough weight to get the fly or flies down quickly below the indicator without adding weight to the leader. The faster and deeper the water, the heavier the nymphs you'll have to use. Weight added to your leader might be needed when the water is too fast or too deep to get your nymphs close to the bottom just based on their weight. That's when split shot comes in. So how do you tell when your weight is right, when you have enough weight? Well, you wanna be close to the bottom and I wanna fish this slot over here. It looks pretty good. There's some soft water behind a big boulder and I know there's some fish in there. So how do I know my weight's good enough? Well, I just casted a rig with two weighted flies over there and I wasn't ticking bottom at all, ever. It didn't snag at all. And also, when you watch the bobber, it's kind of subtle, but if you watch the bobber, the indicator, you can see that it's moving a little bit faster than the bubbles on the surface. And what you really want is for that bobber to kind of lag behind those bubbles a little bit. And it's very subtle and you have to watch it for a while, but after a while, you'll get the hang of watching that indicator just slowing down a little bit more than the bubbles. Everyone wants to know where to add the shot on your leader. A good rule of thumb is to start about eight inches above the upper fly. If the water's fast and you feel you need to get your fly closer to the bottom, you can put the shot a bit closer. If the water is slower, you may want to move your shot as much as 18 inches away. Any further than that defeats the purpose of adding shot because it's just not close enough to get your fly down deep. I often get asked how you decide what two flies, or even three in some places, to try when using a multiple fly rig. Like everything else in fly fishing, there are no rules but I do have some suggestions for you. The first option is to use different sizes, and I almost always do that. You might wanna try a big nymph or bead head combined with a smaller mayfly or caddisfly nymph, or a stonefly and a worm for early season. When you first start out, you're guessing. One option is to go with a popular pattern for a particular river, and then add another one on a whim. That way, you can go with a sure thing, and you can experiment. So one of my favorite rigs for fishing a dry dropper is a fly called the Chubby Chernobyl. It's a foam bodied fly, it has highly visible wings, and I use that as my dry fly, and then I'll tie a bead head, and a Chubby Chernobyl will float, or will suspend even a smaller bead head fly. So it's a great fly to use in this kind of rig. Although you need a high floating visible dry, Try to make it one that's appealing to the trout for the season or for that particular river. In June or July, try a stonefly imitation. In late summer, try a grasshopper fly. So your dry fly is a lure, a strike indicator, and an attractor all in one. Oh yeah, there we go, hopper eat. Well, we've been fishing a dry dropper for about two hours, a uh, hopper and a nymph, and we got one fish on the nymph, but we finally got a fish to eat it, eat the hopper. So we've been waiting for the surface eat, and nice rainbow ate the, uh, ate the hopper. Okay, now that we've explored some options for rigging up nymphs, let's take a look at how to fish these rigs and how to detect those elusive strikes. There's a fish. Everyone seems to have questions about rigging nymphs with indicators and dry droppers, but people seldom ask about where and how to fish them. The best place to fish nymphs with indicators is in water with a broken, moderately fast current, like I have here in front of me. You also wanna look for places with a uniform 
Rather than swirly current, it's always a good idea to start first in faster water. Here's what happens during a nymph drift. You make a cast and the nymphs begin to sink. As the nymphs and indicator drift downstream, the nymphs get deeper and finally hang directly below the indicator. Sometimes the surface current moves much faster than the current below, or if the indicator lands in a different current lane than the flies, the indicator will pull them off to the side. Either of these introduce drag and pull the nymphs, so they move counter to natural stuff drifting in the current. There are two ways to fix this issue. One is to make sure you cast your line, flies, and your indicator in the same current lane. Another is to add more weight to your leader so that the weight helps to counteract the pull of the indicator. By watching your indicator carefully, you can often tell if your flies down below are dragging or not. An indicator that seems to ride in a perky manner on the surface at the same speed as the current, or even slower, is what you want. There's a difference between a dragging indicator and a lagging indicator, okay? A dragging indicator is when the indicator slides across currents, when, when the line tightens and you pull it back toward you and it goes across the currents. A lagging indicator is one that's in the same current as the flies, but it's just going a little bit slower than the surface current because the water down below is always slower than the water on top. This is probably a good time to visit my friend and casting guru, Pete Kutzer, for some tricks on casting with indicator and dry dropper rigs. Today I want to talk about a very fun and effective way to catch a lot of fish, and that's using two flies. When you use two flies, there's a couple different scenarios that you can use those two flies in. One really common way is with a large dry fly and the nymph below it sometimes called a dry dropper. Sometimes you can fish with two streamers. You may even fish with two nymphs underneath a strike indicator, and that can be a very deadly technique in a lot of situations. But when we have two flies, what we wanna do is open up our loop. And so there's a couple things that we have to do in our cast to help open up that loop. When we're casting, we're always told, and you probably heard me say it before or heard somebody else say it before, we wanna travel in a straight path. And that straight path is kinda of like this rod right here. You see it's a nice straight line. That straight path, we want to travel in that straight path on our back cast to that stop, and then we, again, we want to travel in that straight path forward into our stop. If we take that straight path and just bend it a little bit, that's going to help opening up that loop or open up that loop, giving you a little bit of a wider loop, preventing those multiple fly rakes from hooking each other. So when we cast, I like to imagine stopping at my eye level you know, somewhere around eye level, right here, and that allows that loop to jump out with a nice crisp stop getting out to that fish. Well, that tight loop can be a little dangerous. So rather than stopping here at eye level, what I'm gonna do is just stop a little bit lower, just a little bit. That little bit of a lower stop opens up that loop, gets those flies to turn over safely without hooking each other, and land on the water, gets you into a good fishing position. Another great technique when you're fishing with a dry fly and a dropper, or if you're fishing with two nymphs, is a cast called a tuck cast. With the tuck cast, I'm gonna stop that rod and make a quick little lift with my rod tip, just a little bounce, if you will. That quick bounce forces that nymph over the top a little bit more aggressively, getting it to land first, sinking a lot quicker. This is gonna get you into the strike zone a little bit faster, catching more fish. Make the cast, quick lift, nymph lands first, now we're in that strike zone, we're making that good cast. Stopping that rod tip a little bit lower is gonna help opening that loop up, preventing those tangles. These are great techniques when you're fishing with a dry dropper setup, two streamers, or a two nymph rig with a strike indicator and some split shot. That's a lot of stuff. It's easy to get tangled with that. Give these casts a try, and I'm sure you'll catch more fish. Mending is often needed when fishing with an indicator, and you can usually extend your productive drift with mends. If the water next to you is faster than the water your flies are drifting in, mend upstream. But sometimes, the water between you and the flies is moving slower. In this case, in order to avoid drag on the flies, you need to mend downstream. You can never be quite sure when a fish takes your fly when using an indicator. As a friend of mine often says, hook sets are free. Also, the faster the water, the harder the take 
because the fish are grabbing something that's moving faster. And in this kind of water, the indicator will sometimes even plunge underwater, just like a real bobber. In slower water, the take might be more subtle and could be just a minor hesitation. When fishing with a dry dropper, strikes will not be as apparent as when fishing with an indicator because the fly just gets pulled under. So when using this kind of rig, anytime your dry even begins to sink, you need to set the hook. Here's one final nymph fishing trick. If you have trouble with drag and tricky currents, try the two indicator system. Here you take two relatively small indicators of different colors and attach them from eight to 15 inches apart with the one closest to your flies at the point you would normally set it for a particular depth. Fishing with an indicator is about the most productive way to fish most waters, but that doesn't mean you'll land all of them. What happened there was the fish got downstream of me and it's really hard when they're pulling, when their mouth is facing straight upstream and you're yanking them back up, the small hooks like these little tiny nymphs I've got on are gonna pull out. Much nicer, that's the way I like it. Stay upstream of me so you don't get off. That fish took on the swing, which doesn't always happen with an indicator. Catching fish on nymphs using indicators and dry droppers is one of the most effective ways to catch trout. It works all season long, day in and day out. Works when dry flies don't, works when streamers don't. Um, there's a bit of jargon involved, and there's almost sometimes a sixth sense involved in knowing when the fish take the fly, but you'll get it, and you may come up with your own way of fishing nymphs. The ultimate guide to fly fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing, Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Main Office of Tourism, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. <laughs>